Okay, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are with God's Remnant at God's Church of Love online. Now, many of you are in an incubated state and you don't get why life feels tight, secluded, lonely, frustrating, mm -hmm. and your growth process seems topsy-turvy at times. And you feel like you should be way further down the road in your development. So you try all you can, but then you wonder why you don't have a lot of friends, you don't have a lot of people to hang with, you don't have a great support system and all that. Well, let me tell you, I believe everybody in our group and some of you on YouTube are called to leadership. And when you are called to leadership, God has to develop you. There are things he has to impart into you, things he has to pull out of you. Some of the things you've lived with, you've tolerated all your life, will end up hurting you, will do you harm in the long run, will be counterproductive because you have been used to a certain way. You have been used to certain habits, certain forms of communication. And what God is trying to tell you is he wants you to be totally renewed. Whew, still sweating here. He wants you to be totally renewed. Now, one of the things that happens while you're being totally renewed, you are branching out into a new you, a new form of life, a new type of communication, right? Turn this fan on, you guys. Sorry about that. That comes with being old. I got to fan myself today. Whew. Okay, hang on. Okay, now, so what happens, oh, that feels better. What happens in an incubated state is think of the baby, picture the baby. The baby may be weak, and what are we when we come to the Lord? We're weak, we're broken, we're wounded, we're damaged. We need healing. The baby's immune system may be compromised. What are we? <laughs> okay. Easily drawn into temptation because we haven't built up our flying muscles to fly over the problems with God. So what God does is during the beginning stages, a lot of times it can be the first year, first five years of our life. We suffer from loneliness. There's nobody to play with. Think about it. Now I'm talking from a child's standpoint, but I'm talking about, I'm dealing with adults here. When I was 27, for example, all the guys I used to hang with at the nightclub, in the streets, at the pool hall, at the bar. I couldn't hang with them. I mean, I could count maybe 40, 50 people. When I got saved, it was like me, myself, and I. And it was difficult getting used to not having somewhere to go every day, two or three times a day. Staying out all night, because I'm a night owl. It was a whole different routine I had to get used to. It was a whole different diet, just like a baby. Because with the incubated stage, your diet is carefully administered according to your needs. And your needs are, are extreme at some time, at some points of your life when you're starting out with God. You have a lot of wounding, a lot of damage, a lot of brokenness, a lot of... Uh, um, oh my goodness, a lot of confusion, a lot of questions, a lot of, a lot of scars, emotional, psychological, spiritual scars. So now you're trying to rise above all that, but you don't know how. So you are like the baby in the incubator and God has removed all of your norm, all of the things that you have grown accustomed to. I've grown accustomed to your face. Well, now life has a whole new face on it. 
You're not sure if you like it. To be honest, you're not sure if you like it. But you want God. Think about it. So you allow him to isolate you. Not isolate you from the saints. Isolating you from the world. From your norm. And it's difficult to get used to that. Now, there's a scripture that says, All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, right? But some of the new things are weird to us. You know, some of us are used to cussing like sailors and smoking like chimneys. Some of us are used to, are used to lying down with Tom, Dick, and Harry or Mary, Sue, and Jane. At will. Whenever the mood hits, baby, go for it. Well, we're used to that. We're used to giving in to our appetites, to being controlled and driven by our appetites, by our flesh. All right. And what God is teaching us is to come out of the flesh, come out from the world and be ye separate. It's difficult. It's a growing, it's a new level of development. You know, when we are unsaved, you know, we learn new ways. We learn different styles and all that, different songs, different dances. But we don't really learn a life outside of me, myself, and I. That's the difficult part. So here you are sitting, and you're living in an incubator. You don't like it. You're not sure if you like all that Christian music because some of it compared to the music you're used to sounds a little nerdy now, doesn't it? Now, then there are times when while you're going through the incubation period, you have to change your diet. So what happens? You can't listen to the hard rock. You can't listen to metal. You can't listen to the blues. You can't listen to the love songs that make you want to get it on. So now you got to listen to praise the Lord. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. And you're listening to all these different godly songs that you don't know. <laughs> Not even sure you like the style. But that's what you got to feed your spirit with right now because your immune system has been compromised by sin. So you are building yourself up in the most holy faith. All right. Now, in the meantime now, you're also giving up a world of friends and social connections. And where are you? You're sitting in your house alone, alone, nowhere to go, nobody to talk to, nothing to watch on TV, because most of it is geared towards the appetites of the flesh. And you're trying to incubate yourself. Hard. It's hard, Lord. But it's a necessary evil because God has called you to leadership. And leaders can't hang with the pack. Followers follow. Leaders lead. When God has his hand on you, you have to be willing as a leader from the core to pay the price for discipline. You have to be willing to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, the least you can do. And you must not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? You read that word. Hello. You talk to God. You listen, even if you don't hear anything. Ideas may pop in your head. Pictures, concepts, revelations. You get back and read that word. You play gospel and worship. You worship and glorify the Lord. Sing with the music. You may not really know it that well, but you go with the flow because you're learning 
a whole new lifestyle, language, culture, diet, everything. Now, as you are developing, you're in the incubator. There are times when it feels confining. You can't just get up and go when you want. There are times when God says, stay your little hiney home. You can't handle what's out there tonight. You will slide back. Stay your hiney home. Spend time with me. And see, because some of you have not yet experienced God, it sounds boring to you. The thought of it feels lonely. Oh. You, you remember the song, when you walk through the storm, I'm doing it real fast, because I want you to get the words. When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and a sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart. You'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone. Okay, now that's enough of that. But you get the message. You've got to walk through that loneliness. You've got to press toward the mark of the high calling of God. See, we get caught up. We get caught up in the social connections. We get caught up in our homies and our running buddies. Okay, the old ways we're used to. But listen to this, you guys. When God puts his hand on you, there's a word called consecration. And when he wants you to consecrate yourself, that is when you literally, knowingly, willingly place yourself in a form of confinement where you are literally doing time in solitary confinement. You are giving up the things that you consider fun so that you can do this new thing that is weird to you in a lot of ways. But it's a price you're willing to pay because you know there is a reward. We're not just talking about heaven. We're talking about right here on earth in the land of the living. The reward is experiencing God one-on-one. -on -one. The reward is the revelations that you get in the Bible that open your eyes to things you never saw before. I mean, there are revelations that will blow your mind. You will never see it except the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. How can the Holy Spirit reveal something to you if you're not exploring it? How can you explore it if you're not reading it? Mm. The more you read the word, the more revelations will come to you. I'm telling you the truth. Even revelations about God. So, what it's all meant to do is, you know how we grow up learning independence? First, mommy has to teach us how to tie our shoe, or, or poppy has to teach you how to tie your shoe. And then once you get it, you tie in your own shoe, right? At first, they're doing it for you. Now you do it for yourself. See, with God, it's in reverse. The more you grow in God, the more dependent you become on him. Yeah, of course you're dependent on him as a babe in Christ. But as you grow in the Lord, you realize the more you depend on him as a little child, the more you see him move in your life. 
the more deliverance, the more healing, the more answers, the more solutions. Oh, I'm telling you, the things that can happen in your life as a result of you giving up your adulthood and leaning on God. Leaning on his strength. Leaning on his wisdom. Trusting in his love for you when life seems to be attacking you. Knowing that if God allows it is for your good, something good's going to come out of it. Even if it's basically you bearing more fruit and becoming more powerful in the spirit realm. Hmm. I would name this <clears throat> not only the incubation stage, but it's also resistance training. If you are to build up spiritual muscle, you must confront resistance. That's why the Bible calls it pressing. You're pressing toward the mark of the prize, of the high calling of God. What is the high calling of God? You sitting on a pew being a follower? Dump, 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 just glubbing up the word and sleeping and doing your thing. And, and when the weekend comes, you look up the word. You don't think about God all week. Don't talk to him all week. You look up, 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 just a word glutton. But when you choose to allow yourself to be disciplined, developed, pruned, cleansed, purified, corrected, and rebuked by God, that's when the growth begins, baby. And while you're going through that period, you have to open your mouth and say, Lord, give me more honesty. Because, see, Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You cannot be set free without truth. You cannot be free in a lie. You cannot be healed without being willing to forgive those who hurt you, however they hurt you. It, it, there are a lot of things entangled with that. So what you're doing as you're growing deep, like the palm tree, your roots are growing deep, 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 deep. Laying that foundation, getting that solid hole. So that no matter what life brings, you're not tossed like a tornado just picking you up and throwing you wherever it wants. No, you're not given to the elements. The Bible says you shall not be moved. But all that comes, all of that strength, all that stamina, all that trust, all that growth, all that development, all that knowledge, wisdom, understanding, love, everything comes through relationship with God and being totally infused and fed by God's word. And then the other part is being filled and empowered by his Holy Spirit, and being part of a body, a group of believers that feed off of each other because the Bible says the body is meat indeed. So iron sharpens iron as we say things to each other that we may not always like hearing, or we do things that we may not understand but it's for our good. It's for our development. It's out of love. But part of our healing is we're wounded. So sometimes we take love as an attack. And it's not. But that's part of growing. That's part of the growth period. We feel insulted when we ought to be grateful for somebody taking the time to help us. It's all part of the process. Anyway, so my point to you is we need to grow we need to be willing to be made willing. <laughs> we need to be willing to take whatever we got to take 
to be whoever God wants us to be. He's got a destiny. He says in Jeremiah 29, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to bless you, not harm you. Mm. Then he wants to give us a hope and a future. There's a destiny lined out that he's already planned for us. And every experience, every failure, every pitfall, every setback, every financial bind, every uh, lie that's been told on us, every relational strain, every job issue, every health issue, whatever it is, it's all building us up on the inner man. God will not put on you more than you can bear. And there are things you ought to learn. And you know how in school, if you don't learn it, you got to take it over again, don't you? Well, God does that in life too. If you don't get it, just got to go through it again. And he knows some, some of us have to go through it three or four times before we get it, before the light goes ding. Ah. Now, all I say to you is whatever struggles you're dealing with, whatever issues you're you're frustrated with even things in yourself that seem to be slowly coming along. You feel like you're moving in slow motion like those dreams where you're running, but you're going like, oh, no, no. It's like, oh, come on, Lord, how long? And what does God say? Do not be weary. Ah, oh, excuse me. Whew. Do not be weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap. You shall reap. In due season you shall reap. In due season you shall. Not you might. You shall reap if, 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 if you faint not. See, some of us want to, when life comes at us, we want to sit on the ground. We want to part our legs. And you know how babies pee on themselves? Well, we want to, instead of pee on the ground that we're sitting in, we're sitting there wallowing in our self-pity. We all go through it. There's not one of you that doesn't, that hasn't, that never will. And I have too. I have gone through the self-pity stages. Trust me, we all go through them. That happens to be a part of being human and fall <laughs> with fallacies, failures, and imperfections. That comes with the, yeah, that comes with the whole program, with the package. Now, but we don't, Set up camp there. Okay, we deal with a little self pity for a minute. Why, 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 why? God, God, God. And then we get up and say, Okay, Lord, what am I supposed to learn? Tell me where do I go from here? Help me. Hmm, help me handle this in a way that pleases you. I want the solution as quickly as possible. Get me out of the way. Even if you see me getting in the way, get me out of the way. Now, all of that is learning to trust in him. It's all relational. It's progressive. There are things you can't handle now. There'll be duck soup to you 10 years from now. You'll be like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Why? Because you've grown. Why have you grown so quickly? Because you have allowed God to incubate you to get your roots deep, to solidify your foundation and strengthen you on the inner man and help you grow because he has called you to leadership, not followership, leadership. God can't use a follower, but he can use a leader. Here's my question to you. Will thou be a leader or a follower? 
Wilt thou be built up or wilt thou tear down what God has attempted to build in your life? Think about that. It's your choice. The ball is in your court. Now, God bless you as you venture out on your destiny. God bless you as you learn to trust God through it all. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in him. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Learn it, baby. Depend on him. It will do you right at the end. God bless you as your change comes in your incubator.